it kind of introduces segment. This is keep change burn. Like, what would you keep? What would you want to see change as a result of everything you've seen based upon mm-hmm. the past? And the burn is what things should never come back because it didn't, it wasn't working. And now we're able to see it with the uh, 2020 hindsight. So, yeah, I, I think, well, first of all, I think, I'm sorry, what, what, what do you say, Kim? I can huh? see it all like winding up in your head now. <laughs> yeah. It, I mean, when, when, when Rashawn asked, we shit that with me before, I was like, yo, that, that is a crazy question because, you know, keep change burn. I mean, you know, I'm just like, oh God. That, okay. So I, I have to try and deliver this in a way that is somewhat cohesive and coherent. Um, I think one of the things I think I would keep, and I've sort of said this, and this is, I'm, this could just be a me thing. You know, we all of our kids have transitioned to using Chromebooks. We use sort of these online platforms. Um, and I, when we all, we always talk about college ready, right? Getting kids college ready, getting kids career ready. And I really think keeping this idea of using online platforms and students really typing and being able to engage in front of a screen, I think it's something we definitely have to keep. Um, I, I don't think remote learning is ever going away. It's going to, it's going to live in some capacity. It might uh, not be the way it is as intense as it is, as it is now. But I think remote learning has opened up some new possibilities for us. Um, and I think about, it, you know, because you and I, we're like on different coasts right now, right? Yes, we are. But it also means that we're in a position where I could have you come and speak to my class or you can have me come and speak to your class remotely where in years past, you have to fly me out there, put me up in a hotel, you know, all these things. And, and so it creates a way of not only bridging gaps, but also exposing students to genius from other places that they normally might not be able to have access to. And so, and because Zoom can be somewhat interactive, you know, it's not like they're just watching a video someone present. In fact, Mr. Ballard is right here. We could actually have this conversation about a book that he wrote or, you know, or about something that, you know, he covered. And and so I think that is definitely something that we should keep. I I also think um, that, when we talk about kids being college ready and career ready, you know, being able to sit in front of a screen and learn something is something that every human being need, is going to need to be able to do on a very proficient level, at a very high level, right? You know, everyone from Google are offering at-home certificate programs. Colleges are offering online programs. You have to be able to do this. You have to be able to master the ability to sit down and learn something in front of a screen, whether you we like it or not, you're going to need to be able to do that. And so I think we, that's something we need to keep because I really think it's going to help our kids get ready for whatever life is going to, to, to throw at them, right? And, and it also, I think, makes them even that much more marketable if you know that I'm proficient at r- virtual learning, right? I can sit down and learn how to do something and be as proficient as if the teacher and instructor was right in the room with me. So, so, so I think that becomes a really important thing to keep. I, and also, I am fully committed to never making another photocopy in the rest of my life. I am. I don't no. ever want to make copies, wait for a copy machine, hope that it's not broken. I don't ever want to do that again forever. And so that's part of my own personal commitment. I'm about to say, is that, so are you going to, are you keeping the online or are you, Burning the Xerox machine. <laughs> We're probably burning the Xerox machine. And as much as we saw our uh, our uh, copy tech, you know, it was almost like he de- he needed to have his own office there, or we were all in the wrong career because he would be there like three times, four times a week. Um, so, but I mean, you know, we, and, and that's not even an environmental point, but it's, I think it's just it makes sense. Like going forward, it makes sense to be able to to just put things on a virtual platform. Um, and most colleges are using some platform, either, you know, it could be Blackboard or, uh, you know, what, some other program where you have to be able to interact uh, with this online platform. And so I think it's something that we need to, could, we definitely need to keep. Um, so burn or change? Uh, okay. Um, what would I, well, one of the things that I think I would burn is uh, this idea of what normal used to be, right? This idea that kids sitting in classrooms, 30 to a room, 35 to a room makes sense. It doesn't make sense. It didn't make sense then. It's not gonna make sense going forward with all the social distancing requirements. Um, And 
And so we, we've got to sort of burn that idea that normal was normal and, and think about what are the opportunities that this time of quarantine have created for us. And, and my biggest fear is that in the rush to get back to normal, we're going to miss it. We're going to miss what remote could possibly mean for our students and for our teachers uh, and, and how we can really fundamentally change education. Because if we're, if we're honest, we educate kids the same way as they did 50 years ago. It's like, it's like education is, is like the almost the only uh, industry that has not fundamentally evolved over time. We do it the exact same way. And, and, and if we're honest, we are preparing students for jobs that may not exist and that they may not even want. Right. And so and so there's a whole new economy that has emerged some out of this quarantine that kids would like to tap into. And if we as educators aren't knowledgeable of what those new careers are and those new opportunities are, we're not going to be able to teach it to our students. And so they're going to be even further behind those who are just going out and learning these new things, developing these new skills that quarantine has sort of forced a lot of folks to, uh, to, to pick up. And so, so, so when I think about what would I burn, it would definitely be this idea of, of, of normal, this return to normalcy, instead of seeing it as an opportunity to create something new, right? I mean, I, you know, the, the, the genius in the room at every school is that we can see education in a different way, right? We, would, we could do things differently and we can engage our students in, in, in a new way um, that, makes that, that makes learning more fun for them, right? That makes, makes learning more engaging for them. Um, we, we can, you know, up the rigor of the work uh, because they can now produce something that's more rigorous. And so um, that's, I think that's definitely something I, I would burn. Now, what would I change? What, what, what I would change is at, at my school uh, specifically, every Friday is a remote day. So that means teachers don't have to get up. Teachers, you can teach from home. Um, I would change and keep that. <laughs> I would change from being in school five days a week to, you know what? On Friday, you're going to stay home. It's going to be a remote day. You know, have teachers, you know, it should be, it, it's a good day to do something light. I mean, I, I, you know, we, we, we take this thing so seriously and our kids are so tight and so stressed that one thing that remote has allowed them to do is that now in between your class and mine, they can actually go step outside, go to the bathroom, like walk away for a few minutes, right? Um, and so, you know, I would definitely, you know, change this, this need to sort of be in school and suck up everyone's time so much with, with things that, you know, really, like, the, you know, and, you know, teachers, we don't want to say it, but we know that there's some stuff that they're not going to use. They're not, they're not going to use that. But there are a lot of other things that they want to learn. I, I gave, um, we use a bunch of different platforms. One of the platforms we use is, is called Nearpod. I don't know if you all know about it, but we, well, we use Nearpod and I've been given like a couple of polls and collab boards. And I've asked students like, what do you want to learn before you go to college? Right? So these are 10th graders and I'm asking them, what's the one thing you want to learn before you go to college? No one said trigonometry. No one said how to, you know, read Shakespeare. Um, and that, not that those things are not important, but the, the vast majority of them were like, I want to learn how to do taxes. I want to learn how to invest. I want to, you know, I want to learn how to, uh, how do you get an apartment? Like these are things that they're saying they want to learn. And, and all of us know those are good things to know. You really do need to learn those things, you know? And so why are we taking this opportunity to say, okay, what can we really give our students so that when they leave our buildings, they are the type of individual and person that can give back to the community or has a set of skills that is going to take them, you know, and a lot of times, a lot of those life skills and those social emotional learning things are regu regulated not to the high achieving AP students, but sometimes those are things that are given, given to like the skills from students as if, you know, they're the only ones in the building that need it. And it's like, that's not, that's not the case. Um, and so, you know, th th this, uh, you know, that, that's what I would change, I think. If that, I hope that makes some sense to anybody. Absolutely. I, I think if you, if, look, if, if this conversation was a pinball machine, you would hit so many different barriers and levels. <laughs> and like literally, you literally might have written it forward for what Kim and I, what our conversations have been about. And it has been mm -hmm. about everything you mentioned. And like your, your perspective is absolutely unique to your environment, but also so spot on to why this conversation has to continue and we hope to extend it beyond 
just our close friends and teacher friends. So, mm -hmm. so it becomes recognized uh, nationwide because like you mentioned, the biggest fear is that we're missing this moment and this rush to get back and get things to some sort of normalcy. Um, and they're not asking educators. And like I said, no disrespect to the other people in the room, but you need to ask <laughs> educators what normal, you know, what their opinion is so we can actually say, well, we'd like to question normal. And so.